The two Koreas are in high-level talks this Friday night, the first of its kind since 2007. Now that in efforts to improve cross-border relations and spur more exchanges between South and North Korea. Well, not only is it the first in eight years, it's the first such meeting since President Park Geun-hye took office uh, early 2013. Government officials from Seoul and Pyongyang kicked off their talks earlier this morning and are ongoing as we speak. Meaning, our correspondent Song ji Sun has been on standby for quite some time now at the Inter-Korean Dialogue headquarters in Seoul. Now, ji Sun, it's been a long day for you, which could turn into an, an even longer night. How are the talks proceeding at the Kaesang Industrial Complex? Good evening, Guy. We're definitely looking into a very long night, and we just got this from the headquarters that the third round of talks have just begun at 9.40 p.m. there and on Seoul time. Now, this is following the second session, which only the chief delegates attended, and that second session resumed seven hours after the first session, which ended in the morning at 11.10 a.m. Now, these, uh, af this means that they, it took them just as long to return to the table for negotiation for the second and the third round. And after the 30-minute plenary session in the morning, this evening session, the second one, lasted for slightly more than an hour and ended at 7.15 p.m. whole time. South Korea's unification ministry did not elaborate on how many or which agenda items were mentioned in their keynote remarks or the second session. But Seoul's top priority has always been on holding regular reunions for war-separated families, with over 66,000 people still on the wait list to get the chance of seeing their families after six decades since the Korean War. Pyongyang is most likely to ask for the resumption of tours to its Mount Kumgang Resort as a precondition to that. Those tours were suspended in 2008 after a South Korean tourist was shot dead by a North Korean soldier. Now, regarding this issue, Seoul demands Pyongyang guarantee the safety of South Koreans if the tours are to resume. And it will be very difficult for the two sides to narrow their differences during this initial round with a high chance. It is also reality now that this toss will stretch into the night. Kanyang. Right. Well, I suppose uh, we can take comfort in the fact that the talks are on track at least. Now, early this morning, uh, there were news that the mood between the two representatives were quite friendly during the opening session. Um, I know it's hard to say, but can we expect some concrete results either later tonight or, as you said, possibly tomorrow morning? Right. There has been very little delay between the sessions when it started, and we also saw a very rare move by Pyongyang. The North delegation greeted the South at its border, which was a very courteous and, like I said, very rare move by Pyongyang. And, of course, the opening plenary session was held in a very positive moves, vibes, rather, because their opening session was very friendly from both sides. The talks got off to a good start with a North high-level official for its unification agency, Chun jong su who opened his keynote by saying that although it is winter now on the Korean Peninsula, spring should arrive for the two Korea through continued efforts. And for that, South Korea's Vice Unification Minister Hwang Bugi responded by saying, let us make the right first step. There hasn't been a true dialogue between the two Koreas. Distrust and confrontation has resulted in a barrier. We need to dismantle that obstacle and open a new path. It's important that we make the right move for this first step. Let us pave the road to reunification and refrain from straying off the path in this initial round of talks. Now, although there are some issues, very difficult ones, like resuming the tours on Mount Kunga, there are also some lighter matters that both sides are approaching rather at ease. For example, expanding exchanges on, in culture, sports, and on humanitarian grounds. And this initial round could be rated as a success if the two sides agree to hold on to these talks on a regular basis on how many times and when to take the next round. And I will be sure to keep you updated throughout the night. Kanyang. And I'm sure you will. Uh, thank you, Jisun, for that. That was our Song Jisun live from the Inter-Korean Dialogue headquarters in Seoul.